to this video where I guide you through how to paint a Warmaster Iconoclast Titan that Games Workshop sent me. So you can see that the uh, the model's already been built, uh, but I've left off the armor plates. Uh, so that'll allow me to paint the, the skeleton uh, with all the metallic colors, and then we'll be painting the armor panel separately. So to start with, I'm using Burnt Iron uh, by Vallejo. It's a metal color, really nice. They are meant for airbrushing, but I find that they, because they're so fluid, they work really nicely just for being painted on with a brush. And I'm using uh, quite a large Artis Opus dry brush. You can use something similar, say like a, a makeup brush, you'll get a kind of a similar effect. Um, you know, so it, it doesn't really matter too much, but as long as it's a large soft brush, uh, you'll just you'll be able to cover the area very quickly, and uh, you get this you know nice kind of um, finish that isn't too textured. Uh, then I'm going to be using some uh, I don't know how to pronounce it, <laughs> Hashet, something like that, copper Games Workshop uh, metallic color, and that's just to uh, paint onto the hips. So I'm just using straight from the pot. Um, I do find, at least on my version of the paint, that it is a, it doesn't have great coverage. Um, other people have said they get good coverage out of it, so I don't know, it, it just depends. So you might need to give your, uh, paint, your sections of uh, armor here a couple of coats just to get a good finish. Um, other people might find that you only need to do it once. Um, but regardless, you know, just uh, give it a few layers. If you find the paint's a little bit thick, make sure you thin it down, you can just use water. And now I'm gonna give the, uh, the copper a kind of a verdigris finish so I'm using oil paints now and you can see the uh, colors on the screen there and I'll place them on a piece of cardboard and I'm just going to mix them together to get a, a sort of a light green color this uh, gives a, a reasonably close-ish uh, approximation of verdigris and then I'm just going to be kind of stippling it onto the model you can see there I've got some uh, white spirit as well that I'll be using just to thin the paint down can see there how just having a couple of coats gives a much better finish to the the hashit copper so here you can see using the oil paint I'm just kind of dabbing the paint on to start with just using an old brush and kind of focusing more on like the crevice areas and around the rivets and things like that uh, so that would be naturally where the uh, the oxidization would occur more uh, because on the large open areas what you would probably find is that it would get rubbed off a bit don't worry that as I'm applying the paint it's a bit thick uh, because we're going to sort that out now the brush that I'm using here this is actually a custom brush that I've used so this was an older size one and I've just kind of cut the uh, the bristles in half uh, because it, you know the tip was worn out it wasn't really useful for me anymore for standard painting so I've cut it down so now it's kind of like a small dry brush um, but this now allows me to do this sort of stippling effect with it and you can see the oil because it's oil paint you can keep working this kind of like indefinitely really um, you don't have to worry about it drying out and if you find that you get too much paint on then just go back with the uh, the spirits and you know if you just you can either dab your brush in the spirit and then kind of rub it off on some kitchen roll just to take away the excess and then you can dab it onto the uh, the metal area again and that will just soften all the paint kind of instantly but if you find that you've got way too much then you can just actually use the uh, the spirits to kind of lift off the paint if you like you can use a q-tip or even just your brush really kind of like if you use your uh, if you put the spirits in like a small container you can uh, rinse out the brush and just kind of like every time you touch the uh, you know the paint and then put it back in the, the spirit you know you're just removing the paint away it's very easy to just keep going backwards and forwards with uh, using oil paint because as I said you don't have to worry about it drying out so now we're going to give the whole model a wash of uh, oil paints so this is very thin down now and uh, so I've mixed the colors here but if you have burnt umber you can do the same thing without having to mix the colors um, I've used uh, black and sienna i think it was you saw them i mean all the colors will be in the uh, video description anyway it doesn't matter too much you can just use black if you want but i find just putting a bit of uh, brown in there 
just gives it a bit more warmth and makes it look a bit more oily. So you're just covering the whole of the metal area but not on the verdigris section that you've done. Uh, leave it to dry probably for 24 hours. It's quite important when you've uh, so you mix the uh, spirits in with the oil paint to get the wash that you have it quite thin so it is like a wash. You don't want it to be to have any consistency like paint because uh, that will make it take longer to, to dry really. So now that so as I said, as the, the wash had dried, and if you find that you want to speed up the process a bit, you can use a hairdryer. Just be careful not to melt the plastic, so don't hold it in one place for too long. But uh, once it's all dried, you can see here I'm just using Chrome, again by Vallejo, and these are you know, they're the big parts, they're designed for airbrushes. You can see the paint as I apply it, so this is straight out of the pot. Um, it's very, very liquid, so it runs well. It, they do have good coverage, but just be careful. If you hit a uh, recess with it, it will sort of flood the area, and you know that makes a bit of a pain to clean up. So here you can see the, uh, the solvent that I'm using, the, uh, the spirit, and uh, now we're going to give the all the areas that I just painted chrome. So looking at any like kind of ball and socket joint, any sort of piston area, uh, they were all painted just solid chrome. Again, you may have found that you might need to give them a couple of coats uh, but don't worry too much about it because as we apply the weathering effect here uh, or rather the oil effect um, you know it kind of takes away any of the uh, the faults with it so you know don't worry too much about that there you can see so I applied the, the paint to start with and then used the spirits just to sort of wash it off a bit and then dabbed it with a q-tip just to take away the excess uh, you don't have to use a q-tip you can just sort of flood it with uh, spirits as well um, that it just makes the uh, the paint sort of flow into the recesses and it removes it from the uh, the larger flat surface so uh, yeah you, you have options for, for how you do it. Uh, it I find it doesn't matter too much about getting the any of this uh, kind of more browny color uh, onto other parts of the Titan it just makes it look sort of more oily and there you can see all the uh, ball and socket areas and the pistons and things have now been given this uh, wash of uh, brown uh, oil paint. So now we're going to move on to the armour panels. So I've got a few different types of armour panels. To start with uh, I'm going to do just the plain blue. So there's quite a lot of the Titan that is in blue but then other parts have stripes on and then other parts have uh, flames on. So I'm going to show you uh, all the different parts including uh, weathering them and applying decals to them as well. So, but just to start with any of the blue areas, and pretty much all of the armor panels need to be painted blue, regardless of whether they're going to have stripes on or flames on. The only different one that doesn't require any blue is the head because I painted it yellow. <laughs> um, but just to airbrush it in, so what I did was I used some, used some uh, Night Lords blue to start with. Uh, mixed in with some Vallejo airbrush thinner and that was used at about 30 psi and a size 0 0.4 needle. Uh, when you're applying the blue, uh, the first layer of blue, the uh, Night Lords blue, just cover the whole panel so you don't have to worry any, uh, about any kind of colour modulation at this stage, no fades or transitions, it's just a case of a flat blue colour over the whole panel. For the next colour, you can see here I'm using McCrag blue Again, mixed uh, in with some air Vallejo airbrush thinner, and uh, again, around about 30 psi and uh, 0.4 needle. But when you're applying this, uh, you're just focusing kind of like on the like the upper section and the curve of the armor panel. And now, obviously, each armor panel is different. Uh, so you've got things like the shins and the thighs. They have different levels of curvature on them. Uh, you have to kind of play it by eye a little bit. It's not super accurate in terms of lighting, but it does mean that they stand out nicely. Uh, so I've not painted this model at all with consideration to light sources or anything like that. If you see a lot of my other painting, it's very specific in terms of light sources and bounce lighting and things. This is mo uh, much more in, term for, in terms of gaming. Uh, also because of the scale of the uh, you know, Adeptus Titanicus, uh, it looks a little bit kind of strange if you do uh, directional lighting on uh, to paint a model like that. I don't think I've actually seen anyone try and paint 
uh, an Adeptus Titanicus model with directional lighting. Um, I'm sure it could be done. I might even give it a go myself, but uh, for, for gaming purposes, uh, it's not ideal. Uh, so now we're going to turn this into some stripes. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm using Tami, um, kind of, uh, what's it, tape? <laughs> five, uh, I think it's five millimeter. You can get different uh, sizes depending on your uh, preference. It, so, you know, if you want thinner stripes, just remember that, so obviously the tape has got the size on it, the gap in between hasn't. You have to uh, judge that yourself by eye. And, you know, it can be a little bit tricky. You could end up with some very kind of chunky stripes if you're not too careful. Um, you could, so you can see there, I use some dark sea gray to give it a coat. Again, same uh, process, same PSI, same mix with uh, Vallejo uh, airbrush thinner, and just covered the the whole of the panel. Uh, when you when you apply the tapes, just be, be a little bit careful. Try and get the tape to go as close as you can to the trim. The trim does make it more tricky but any area of the tape where uh, it goes over the trim you'll find there's tiny little gaps where the paint uh, can run underneath so be really careful that when you're spraying for a start that you don't um, over spray or so that you get too much paint on the model and make it run uh, because then it's just going to kind of make a mess uh, especially because the the blue areas have, have modulation on so but you know like a fade on them uh, and that means it's quite hard to paint it by hand again to fix those problems and uh, you also saw there i used some uh, white paint as well airbrush that on again it's exactly the same process uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward most of the painting for this and then you can uh, the, the most satisfying thing is to uh, pull off the tape afterwards i think you can see it's uh, and I think it's quite clear as well. You can see just uh, where it touches the trim, you get it gets a little bit faded and it's not quite as sharp. But don't worry about that because when you do the weathering on it, uh, we can hide a lot of that and it just kind of class it as sort of chip paint and things. If you wanted, I didn't on mine for this one. On other models, I do. Uh, I, I kind of wasn't thinking about it on this. There was a bit of a time pressure uh, to get this finished. Uh, but if you wanted, you could take. You could either class them as white stripes or blue stripes. Now, I know that doesn't make sense because there's clearly um, just two stripes there, but what I mean is you can class it as like a blue base with white stripes on top or a white base with blue stripes on top. Whichever one you go for, you take the base color. Uh, so if you wanted white stripes with a blue base, you take the blue color and you just do like little dots and lines and things on top of the, uh, the white lines and it'll look like the paint's been chipped and scratched. However, be careful when you do something like that. Remember the scale of these uh, models, you would want really kind of very small uh, damage to it. You don't want something that looks the same scale as a 28 millimeter, like a Space Marine, because then it kind of tricks your eye into thinking, actually, it just looks like the same scale as a Space Marine. <laughs> so now we're gonna be putting some uh, decals or transfers onto the panel. I'm using the Forge World, not Forge, um, Games Workshop uh, set for the Legio Storum or Warp Runners. And what you can see here is I'm just going to be using Microset. Uh, you can use uh, Microsol, and that will make your life a little bit easier for just positioning the uh, the decals. But what I just find is it's a waste of time. <laughs> um, it just takes longer and I just want to get the process done. However, what you will see here is that uh, when I tried to apply the decal, it folded over and I couldn't get it to straighten out, uh, partly because I was focused on making sure that you could still see it on the camera. So I didn't want to put the, the panel down uh, and then try and mess about with it. But you can see here, it's it's been a bit of a pain. Um, what happened? What you do when this happens is just put it back in the water it will sort of uh, open up again um, you can try and also do what i'm doing here and make it uh, fold out but the thing is um you kind of you put a fold in it now you can see there i actually damaged just the top section of it a little bit i wasn't overly concerned about that because again you can just turn it into weathering uh, but it, and there you can see again i um i finished off the, placing the rest of the transfers so 
Um, what you might have noticed, so for start off, I put some uh, microset down that put the transfers on top. So that means that it, there's a layer of microset underneath them. It means it, like it, um, it helps to dissolve it from both sides for the uh, the film of plastic that's on it. Uh, and then you, so then you put the uh, the microset on top of as well. Um, just and then leave that for a good few hours, preferably again overnight. Uh, the painting process for this is quite quick, but the drying times take a long, a long time. So uh, there are pros and cons to uh, using things like decals and stuff like that. Um, here you can see I've, I placed some on one of the front shoulder panels as well. Uh, just to note here, uh, this section when you get this in the the kit, this has sculpted on detail on the top part, like a, a banner section. And again here, this is how it will look like after all the weathering, which I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, I cut all that off with a scalpel, uh, so just be aware of that. The kit does not come with smooth uh, armor panels for the front shoulders. So here you can see, um, just to paint the trim, I I would say actually uh, I kind of tweaked the process as I went along. Um, at this stage, the plan was to paint all the trim gold, so I'm using uh, metal and alchemy necro gold by scale seventy five. The, the, the plan was to paint all the trim gold and then weather it with uh, oils and things and uh, seal it and using uh, matte varnish but I use an airbrush to put the matte varnish on uh, which kills the gold effect now at the time I was like well that that's fine it makes it look kind of a bit dirty and grimy but then later on I changed my mind and I wanted it to be shiny gold to uh, contrast against the matte it will be matte anyway the, the matte armour panel so my recommendation is to uh, paint the gold after you've done the weathering on the armour panel and sealed it with the, uh, the matte varnish the other option is, and this is something that I also did don't use the airbrush to apply the matte varnish at the end uh, and then you can so you're basically going to be uh, applying it by a normal brush and it just takes a, like, a few moments longer but I actually find that you get kind of a better finish to it uh, but anyway regardless uh, you can see here I'm using the same sort of brown mix that I uh, used earlier and uh, for the, the wash but obviously this is a little bit thicker so this again it's uh, black oil paint mixed with some sienna uh, if you want some you can kind of do it, like use multiple colors when you do this for this piece because of the stripes being blue and white i didn't want to use uh, any of the armor color uh, for the mixed in with the stripes but when it comes to the solid blue uh, armor panels i do actually mix in some light blue color to get like faded armor streaks on there but you can't do that with this because what happens is the uh, obviously the blue will streak onto the white. It looks a bit weird. You can see here I'm using that brush again, that custom brush that I made, uh, where which was again a size one Artis Opus brush that has been too old, worn down. So I just cut the bristles in half and it gives me like a very soft, tiny dry brush. And so you can see uh, uh, the the gloss. Uh, layer on top of the armor panel this allows you to keep playing with the uh, oil paint painting on streaks and things so if you kind of paint streaks on um, you know, don't be afraid to just kind of slap the paint on really heavily because you can move remove it you can push it around you can do all sorts of things with it it will dry very very slowly the only thing that's kind of important for this is that one you're not going to be painting acrylic paint on top of oil paint of thick oil paint because what happens is the acrylic dries faster than the oil and as oil keeps drying after the acrylics dried what ends up up happening is the acrylic paint will crack um, so you need to have the paint fairly thin by the time it's finished because it needs to dry again uh, overnight but pretty much you know you you have a lot of options for, for how you do this um, the other thing is that you can also turn the the mix into a wash and again you don't have to make a mi mix you can just 
use some burn time but it's you know, very close approximation if you also want to get it's like a bit more of like a rust effect with some streaking you can do you can paint some chips on there so we talked about chips on the stripes um, but you, you can also paint some chips on the base color and that would also work on the blues as well the chipping like that tends to work on lighter colors better though because you just can't see it on the darker things like darker blue uh, but you could use some sienna just raw sienna and just streak down from that and it'll look like sort of rust streaks instead of the the dirty grime sections that i'm uh, painting on here i didn't want to go too heavy with things like chipping and like damage to the titan i felt like uh, something that's been in the you know on the battlefield a long time is likely to have a lot of uh, sort of oil and grime and things like that appearing on it but i don't think uh, imperial titans would get that much in the way of uh, rust <laughs> appearing on them i think they'd just be too well maintained So you know that's uh, this is pretty much what you end up with after the uh, the oil washes and the streaking and all kinds of things like that. Now I'm going to give the armor panel a coat of uh, matte varnish. Now, as I mentioned before, the reason that I'm giving the matte varnish finish is it will separate out the armor panel to the armor trim. But here you can see I'm using an airbrush to apply it, uh, and. Again, as I mentioned, I strongly recommend that you don't use an airbrush to apply it. Just do it by hand. And again, just to strongly reiterate, wait for the oil paint to dry. Hopefully you've had it thinned down enough. Wait 24 hours for it to dry. Because if you start applying by hand the uh, you know, the matte varnish, there's a good chance that you're going to kind of pull and move around some of the oil paint. And again, you can use a, a hair dryer to speed up the process as well. So now I'm going to show you how to paint some flames onto the the leg section, the shins, and uh, you know basically the whole of the lower legs for the Titan. Uh, now I I have given this a coat of uh, gloss varnish as well. You don't need to if you don't want to. You can gloss varnish it after this stage, uh, but it does mean that it's. Like if you go really, really, really wrong with painting the flames, that you can kind of like scrape it off because the gloss varnish uh, will act as a, a guard. Um, the, but there's no real benefit to glossing it apart from the fact that you just glossed everything at the same time. So, you know, it does speed up the process in that way. But if you want to do like, you know, to make everything match the same way, <laughs> if you like, then, uh, you know, paint the flames on then gloss it and do all the weathering um, but just to uh, talk about what I'm actually doing on the screen so to start with I'm using Baylor Brown uh, what you're going to find is when you're applying it uh, it gives a fairly translucent coat now you do need to thin the paint uh, don't just apl apply it straight from the pot so I'm using it around about 50 50 water to paint and what it does mean is you'll need to do multiple layers because you want a fairly opaque finish. Opaque just means that you can't see through it, so it's you know a, a good solid block of uh, color, and it'll look very sort of smooth. Um, I know there are transfers that can, you know, that you can use for flame effect. Uh, I do find that if you can, freehanding will work better because you can match the flames around the spaces that are available so that they fit perfectly to what you want. Whereas, you know, the decals or transfers will, you know, they'll look nice and clean, but they don't fit the space exactly. Uh, you could do a combination of both if you wanted. Um, but again, like sometimes it's very obvious where the decal ends and the, the painting starts. So if you can and if you have the time, then uh, freehanding flames will give a, a really nice uh, result and it will just fill the air area exactly how you want it to but just bear in mind that it will take a while even with practice it did take me a little bit of time to, uh, to do all this flame work because uh, I think there are eight panels I think I had to do this on uh, and I also did it on the the head of the Titan as well so that did take me a fair amount of time um, but I think the result at the end is worth it anyway and remember this is a big centerpiece model probably not going to have more than one uh, Warmaster Titan regardless if it's an iconoclast or just the standard uh, Warmaster 
uh, you know in your army unless you're painting or uh, playing something really you know stupidly big so <laughs> for the flames you can see as i'm applying them they look very thin to start with that's just to roughly place them on the model uh, once you've got the kind of like the position set then you can start filling in the extra sort of curves the general shape you want is an s but try not to make every s look the same so some of them want to be mirrored some are bigger some with big curves some with small curves um, and then as you go along you sort of can blend some of them together just make sure they all flow but it's the the s shape is what gives it the nice look and then you want to vary the thickness of the line so obviously it tapers off at the the tip that's pretty uh, straightforward but then as it goes down you'll fatten it out onto some of the curves and then other curves it tapers in again now you just basically can pretty much do this randomly uh, the main thing is just to make sure that not everything looks the same the more random you can make it the better it looks and this is actually something else that i noticed on a lot of transfers that you can get is they're not random enough they all look they basically copy pasted like a small section of flame and you know copy pasted it over and over so uh, it looks very kind of uh, almost it looks too much like a pattern whereas you know this will give you a much more random um, and kind of interesting look basically again at this stage so I mentioned it's going to do multiple you need multiple layers of the Baylor Brown to get the opaque finish, but don't worry too much still at this stage about the multiple coats. You're still blocking in the shapes. So the first stage is to position everything for all the, the S shapes everywhere. The second stage is to fatten sections of the flame, getting all the tapered, you know, tapered ends, fat curves, and tapered in again. And just make sure it fills all the area of the armor panel uh, to get to a pleasing effect, something that you like the look of, basically. You should also notice on the wet palette in the top left there, I've got the two colours that I airbrushed on, so that's the Night Lords Blue and the Calgar Blue. That will, so if you don't want to scrape any of the, uh, the Baylor Brown off, uh, because I didn't want to do that either. So, um, you know, I, I have the two paints there that will then allow me to kind of roughly fix anything. You know, if you go a little bit crazy with the flames, you know, make some of them too big or you don't like the original placement, uh, you can just paint over the, the flames. And that, what you'll find is it's easier to paint over them than or, like the Baylor Brown, as I said, is very translucent. So you have to give multiple coats, but for the, the blues, you shouldn't have quite that much problem. So if you make a mistake, it's easy to kind of wipe it out. The problem that you will have though, well, it's a few problems. Because of the gloss layer, when you apply these blues, they're gonna stand out quite strongly because they're more matte in finish. And because gloss sort of changes how you perceive the color, you will think, oh, I've made a mistake when you apply the blue because it will stand out. But when you give everything the matte varnish at the end, it'll all tie together. So don't worry about that too much. And any kind of like small idiosyncrasies will just look like damage, you know, paint weathering and things like that. You can see after I've given it a few layers. Um, but just to go back to uh, any mistakes that you make. Um, the other thing is because the, uh, the Calgar Blue was airbrushed on, it gives a very different look to a hand-painted highlight. And what you might find is that uh, you just can't match the exact color so if that's the case you probably want to mix some of the uh, the Night Lords blue and the Calgar blue uh, it gives kind of like a closer uh, approximation of the airbrushed on Calgar blue on top of the Night Lords blue especially because of some of the fades at the side you know the highlight is mainly down the middle big curve of the panel also remember that because of the gloss varnish it's sort of hiding that uh, highlight of the Calgar blue a little bit it's making the whole of the panel look quite blue and rich but when you apply the matte varnish it's going to look lighter you know so just keep all these things in mind <laughs> um, just to go back to the flames now so you can see there I've got a few more colors that have appeared on the wet palette in the top left 
Uh, these are all on the middle row. Uh, they're just mixed with Mephiston Red and Baylor Brown. So on the far left, that's just pure Mephiston Red. Then in the middle, it's kind of like 50-50, and then to the right, it's um, like a small amount. I say 50-50, actually, so no, that's probably not right. It's, it's less Mephiston Red. Uh, be really careful with the Mephiston Red. Uh, this is something, actually, I just uh, remembered that it's uh, important to pay attention to. Mephiston Red has really strong pigment in comparison to Baylor Brown. And when you apply the red to it, it's just going to look dark straight away, even a small dot of it. And you'd be like, oh, that that means that when you apply it, it looks like it's going to make a massive tonal jump between the Baylor Brown and the next stage of the kind of the, the red transition into the bottom of the flames. Also, before anyone says that I've got the flame colours the wrong way around, <laughs> so you know when you paint flames, the hottest near like the base near the base, and as it goes further away from the source of the flame, it gets darker um, as it gets cooler. So in theory, the flame should be lighter at the bottom and darker at the top, whereas I'm doing that uh, inverted. There are two reasons for this. One. It stands out way better, so uh, because of the tonal difference between the base blue and the Baylor brown, and which will be highlighted even lighter on the tips of the flames, that makes it high contrast. So the flames stand out better painting it like this against the dark background. The other reason for it is that the warp runners, that's how they do it. Now I don't know if that's because whoever originally painted this back when the the warp runners were created. Uh, by Games Workshop, whoever painted the flames on them did it and they they weren't thinking, they didn't realise that the flames shouldn't be that way. But regardless, this is now how the flames look on the warp runners and this is how they're supposed to be. So this is kind of canon for the the paint. But don't, like if you want to do it the correct way for how flames work so that the flames are darker at the top and lighter at the bottom, I don't think anyone's going to complain. It's not like they come along and say, "Oh, you've not painted the warp runners right." But you know, but just be aware. Like, um, if you paint it like this, how I've done, and someone goes, "Oh, you've painted flames wrong," tell them to go away. <laughs> right. So um, you can see, like the uh, the layers as I've been uh, applying them. So it, obviously, they get darker at the bottom. You just keep layering it. The paint has to be watered down fairly heavily for this, so you can get the transitions. So it's around about one and a half parts water to one part paint. The two highlight colours you see at the bottom, these are again Baylor Brown base mixed with white this time. So on the bottom right, it's Baylor Brown with a small amount of white, and then next to that it's around about 50-50. Uh, don't worry about the exact mixings, but you should be able to judge it by eye when you're mixing the paint on your palette. Uh, because you just want kind of like small steps. If you you can take the flames up to white if you want, but it's really not necessary. Just the the fifty fifty uh, mix should be light enough for the very tips of the flames. And um, just be a little bit careful with how far down the actual flame you take it. It might be a case of that you get the orangey color too close to the sort of bone color, and you lose the yellow in between. So you can see there, I just went back with a bit of the Baylor brown. Um, what you can do as well is water down the Baylor Brown more and kind of glaze over the whole midsection and that will create a, a smoother transition. It really depends on how long you want to take painting the flames. Uh, if you want, you can just spend ages making perfect transitions and things, but I'll tell you right now, it's not worth it because you're going to be weathering over the top and the weathering will hide kind of any dodgy transitions. Already at this stage, as I'm painting these on, um, I'm kind of like doing them too well for what's necessary, uh, especially because when you add the the oil weathering on top, it just sort of it just pulls everything together and makes it you know it hides imperfections. Weathering is one of the great things for uh, for hiding uh, poor paint jobs. So there again, you can see uh, I've worn watered down the, the Baylor Brown a little bit uh, just to help with some of the transitions. Uh, the main thing that you're just trying to avoid is very obvious steps between each colour. So you don't want to just be painting kind of like in a big block then change it to the next colour and then do another block and 
change to the next color and so on because then you get very obvious steps between the transitions if you can do it more like um, broken lines in between each step um, you know so they kind of like overlap and blend in together you get a much better result and that's sort of what you'll end up with uh, when you've done sort of like all the weathering so you can see I've got lots of oil onto the uh, necro gold so again all of the trim is painted with necro gold you will go insane painting necro gold <laughs> over all the trim uh, there is a lot of it uh, especially if you're going to highlight it like I have um, I tried to speed up the process in other titans that I've painted I used uh, the Games Workshop contrast paints to shade a lot of the gold uh, but it just took me too long for, for a model this size there's so much trim so I just sped up the process. I just used the oil, the same oil paint that I've used for all the streaking, and I just put it in all the dark areas I wanted it to on the trim. So it's actually quite quick to do that. Uh, and then I'm using, uh, you saw it on the screen just there a moment ago, uh, and again, another Vallejo airbrush color, and this time it's just gold. Uh, just be aware when, it, I mean, it says it's gold, but I think you can see as I'm applying it, it's almost silver with how bright it is. It's a really, really light color. Uh, the nice thing is because it's sort of so liquid and so runny uh, it is a bit translucent this one so as you're applying it um, it just kind of blend in nicely with the, the background uh, kind of necro gold that you've already used for the highlights as I place them any edge that faces upwards I give a quick edge highlight with this uh, be aware because this paint is very fluid if you, again, so I mentioned this again when, when we were talking about the the chrome on the legs. But if you get this in a recess, it will flood it. Uh, so you have to then spend ages trying to get all the metallic flakes off of the model, especially if you get it in any of the recess where the trim touches the armor panel. Um, but you know, just just paint the upper edges and a few of the block sections. Don't go around every edge on it. It's, too much work and it's not worth it you won't see the the difference um, and that's kind of like the end result what you're looking for so you can see again I've given the the whole armor panel a quick coat of the matte varnish so now the final thing that I'm going to show you uh, and this is purely optional but I put on to the Titan some quick uh, ribbon not ribbon, uh, streamers uh, the original the, the model itself comes with these two tiny little kind of banner sections that dangle from its shoulders and one from its kind of crotch banner. Uh, I'm not overly keen on them. I, I'm i not keen on plastic banners anyway, to be honest. I prefer to you know, paint my own banners. And that's kind of what I'm doing here. So you saw the plastic clamshell that I showed before. That's what these are made of. They're about five millimeters wide, uh, prime them black, and then also, don't forget to do like a little triangle at the bottom. I mean, you don't have to. You could do an inverted triangle, so it's like two prongs at the bottom, whatever shape you want, really. But, um, you know, then prime it black. Wait for it to dry, obviously, and then give it a... For a start, I'm giving it a coat of XV88. It does depend on what colour you want the banners to be, honestly. But, you know, for, if you want to, to copy how I'm doing these, XV88 is uh, the way to go. And try and do it as a fade because remember these are going to come out from behind the armor panels. So stronger color at the bottom then fade it out to the top section where your fingers are. Just be a little bit aware if you're holding it like I am. The reason I'm holding it is so that you can see it on the camera. But ideally you'll mount these onto uh, kind of like a, a base or something while you're spraying this. If your finger's in the way you'll end up with a finger at, fingertip outline on the tip of the banner. So... Um, try and avoid that um, also airbrush it a little bit better than I am I'm I'm being lazy so I've got a slight blockage in my airbrush and I couldn't be bothered to fix it while I was filming so uh, the spray is not coming out great and I'm over applying the paint just to get a coat on there because I know as it dries you're not going to be able to see any faults in it but um, ideally when you're applying your paint with your airbrush uh, don't apply the paint so much that you can see it run <laughs> right so what we're going to end up trying to end up with is something like on the left here um, I've done the same process again by applying the transfers as I did with the arm panel so I didn't need to show you that again uh, don't worry about my fingers there looking a little bit cracked on the skin I had uh, a bit of eczema on my 
fingers uh, from when it was hot here. It's gone away now. I'm I'm fine. <laughs> but um, so uh, the uh, the transfers are dry. It's just a case now of applying the uh, the text mark. You see there, I flicked the uh, the little piece of, uh, the banner and caught the brush, and I couldn't be bothered to fix it. So I just turned it into like a little sort of F shape. Um, but all the little text is just dots and dashes, lots and lots of them. Uh, don't spend too long on it uh, because you're not writing anything. You know, just qu very quick dots and dashes. I'm just using Vallejo Model Color Black Paint. Uh, quite a sharp paintbrush. This uh, is a size 00 Artist Opus brush. Uh, the main thing to do is try and keep them all horizontal. The temptation, or like the problem is anyway, as you go along, what will happen is uh, you tend to kind of go up or down, trail off a little bit. Um, just try and keep everything horizontal. It'll make it look much better. Also, break up the text a bit so that, you know, you just don't go across the whole width of the, uh, you know, the banner, just doing that over and over all the way down. You can make the process way quicker if you do some sections that only go halfway across. Think of it like writing in um, paragraphs. So what you'd have is, you know, the last sentence breaks up and, you know, so you get small sections of text that don't go all the way across basically um, and it just means that you have to paint less and it looks more interesting as well uh, and also with it, as you're applying all these little dots and dashes make them go around the uh, the transfers that you've got on there which also looks kind of interesting one thing I did or didn't do rather when doing this is I didn't take the text quite high enough I would have preferred them to go a little bit further up to where my top finger is um, also, I'm just using a little bit of the Morgas bone and just kind of like tip, tipping that onto the, like, you know, dabbing it with the tip of the brush, very watered down, almost sort of like a kind of a scratchy glaze onto some of the decals, just so that the image isn't quite as strong, because I found it looked a little bit strange having it such a clear, bright outline on it. Now, when that's dry, just give the whole thing a coat of matte varnish again. Uh, just to tie it all together. Probably do a better job of painting some of the <laughs> the, the bone colour on the skull than I did there. It, makes, it looks a bit messy, but you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, I don't think anyone's going to read it. And then uh, what you do is you glue the top section into the uh, behind the armor panel using super glue then hold the bottom section hold the hairdryer against it for about you know five ten seconds it'll go soft really quickly then you can just twist it and bend it into shape um, it's much easier doing it that way than trying to do it separately you know by holding a hairdryer and then quickly bending it um, it's much easier to glue it to the model first and uh, that's pretty much it then uh, the only thing that i forgot to tell you for the the face um, that was done first with a layer of Baylor Brown again for the yellow, and then uh, I used Uriel Yellow, uh, and that was pretty much it in terms of the color. Uh, you just did the kind of like the oil weathering and things over the top of it, and you get like that sort of nice high contrast against the armor. And the glow on the engines, uh, again, Mephiston Red, and then uh, whichever orange or, and yellow just a little quick airbrush spray in any of the engine ports and the uh, the power claw thing you know in the center of that just makes it look like uh, they're glowing a little bit but you know a very kind of simple straightforward painting process it just takes a long time because it's a large model with a lot of details but anyway that's the end of the video I hope you enjoyed it uh, please subscribe I've got so many videos that I have to uh, finish off and get posted up on uh, YouTube um, and of course I have my Patreon and my uh, personal website where I have a lot more videos and things where I'm working on some uh, Golden Demon competitions. But as I said, that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.